السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ My dear attendees, viewers all around the world and your excellency Hazrat Mufti Munir Sahab uh, with your due permission I would like to uh, share some more thoughts on the process of the uh, purification of hearts. Uh, like I discussed the last time uh, we have uh, our Hazrat Ji has uh, uh, coined out the, the, the format of the Tazkiyah workshop uh, which has some prerequisites and those are the 10 prerequisites or 10 points of uh, Tasawwuf. They are the prerequisites with, with which we have to abide by, with which we have to adopt uh, before we can, uh, we can get board on the journey of uh, Sufism and uh, Tasawwuf. So today uh, we will discuss the next two points which are the points of uh, uh, points number three and four. So point number three is of uh, ilmu shariat and point number four is uh, ikhlas e niyat which is the sincerity of intentions. So I will begin with the uh, ilmu shariat which is the knowledge and religion. Uh, that how important knowledge and religion are in your life and how they are interconnected. Um, for a salik, for a follower of uh, spirituality, uh, having 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 have having uh, have a, a very uh, sincere repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you are required to do something. You have cleansed yourself in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by making a sincere apology and repentance. Now, what next for you? There, there should be a good path for you in which you will uh, walk and that will lead you to, to, to your Lord. That path will be the path of knowledge, will be the path of ilm. You have to acquire knowledge in order for you to progress in the path of uh, uh, spirituality. That path leads you to the knowledge of the universe first. First you gather the knowledge of the universe in which you are living and then you don't stop there but you, you f progress on further and you get the knowledge of the creator of the universe. Th that, is the, that is the development and progress of uh, a Salik, that he does not just progress, uh, he, he just does not stop on uh, the no gaining the knowledge of the universe, but he goes beyond that and he starts to think, what is my uh, Rub like? What is my creator like? And what he wants from me? These are the important things that he is interested in uh, next. So this, this part of the knowledge is called the knowledge of religion, that you start to gather knowledge of religion. This knowledge of universe is enough for you to sustain yourself for this world, but the knowledge of religion will sustain you in the world hereafter. And we want to be successful in both worlds, right? We commonly use the phrase best of the both, both, both worlds. What does that mean? Best of the both worlds for a Muslim and Mormon means best for him here and best for him in the world hereafter. So the Islamic knowledge tree that I'm talking about has two main components. This is a workshop, so I will explain you some theoretical aspects also so that you keep that in mind when you are practicing your religion. So the Islamic knowledge tree is like a tree and it has two components, the main stem and the branches. In Arabic, we call the usul deen and the furu deen usul deen means the main stem or the principles of the religion and the furu deen are the branches of the tree. So the usul deen the, the principles or the main stem is the faith. Main stem stems from the roots of faith. Roots of faith and the stem of the tree is the, is the, is the main system of beliefs and dogmas and uh, a belief system that that is mandatory for anybody who wants to be a Muslim and that compasses and compasses uh, uh, Tawheed, uh, oneness of Allah, uh, the finality of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the belief in the system of resurrection that there is life after death. And uh, regarding the fru -e deen which is the ancillaries of deen, they are equally important because a tree cannot stand just by itself. It looks nice and complete with the stem along with the branches. If there are no branches, no leaves, then that tree is an incomplete tree and nobody lo looks to, uh, likes to look at them. So those uh, fru -e deen the, the, the ancillaries of the deen are equally important and they are the practical rulings of our deen which encompasses uh, the daily five uh, times Salat, 
uh, fasting, zakat, uh, sacrifices, and all other practical rulings that we come across in our religion. Now, uh, there is some deeper information and knowledge that we have to learn. Uh, I'll try to keep it light and simple, uh, but we have to pay attention so that we can understand the deeper meanings of the Savuf, because now we are, uh, we are boarding on a deeper journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just discussed that uh, the Islamic knowledge tree has two components, right? The, the main stem and the, and the, uh, and the branches. Now, both of those have an outer aspect and the inner aspect. The outer aspect is called as Zahir in Arabic, and the inner aspect is known as the Batin of the, of the uh, knowledge. So, like anything in the world, this is a principle that everything in the world has an outer aspect that we are looking at, and there's always an inner aspect. Look at the human being himself. He has an outer body and an inner thing, which is the soul, right? This desk has an outer surface and an inner, inner substance, right? Anything in the world has an outer appearance and an inner appearance. So what a follower of spirituality is interested in is gaining the knowledge of the inner aspect also, because that leads you towards the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the outer aspect is the knowledge of Shariat, uh, and the inner aspect is known as the Ilmul Haqiqat, that the, the knowledge of the hidden truth. When you combine both these knowledges, only then a spiritual uh, student is considered as a Salik, and he cannot abandon one or the other. He has to learn both of these. It is very well, ex these two aspects of religion are very well explained by the story of, of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam when he uh, went on board with uh, Hazrat uh, Khizr alayhi salam on a journey uh, that uh, Hazrat Khizr alayhi salam killed an innocent child and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was completely uh, astonished, astounded by the fact that how can you kill uh, an innocent child? It's because one was the master of religion and the other was a master of ilmul haqiqat. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam knew shariat very well that you cannot kill an, any innocent person. But Hazrat Khizr alayhi salam was aware of the deeper haqiqat that what was going to happen if this child had lived. That's why in Tasawwuf and Spirituality, which, in which Hazrat Khizr is the leader of, uh, we learn both the knowledge of religion and knowledge of uh, Haqiqat, which is the inner truth. Um, uh, one of the giants of uh, spirituality is Hazrat Khwaja Ali Hajwari in his, uh, in his uh, great book, uh, Kashful Mahjub, he has defined this fact that the knowledge of religion is completed when a person acquires both aspects of the knowledge, ahkam uh, e and marfat e When he combines both of these, then his knowledge is completed in the spiritual world. Because every specialist defines uh, the problem in their own Way. So the, the specialist of uh, the Sawwuf will define the knowledge in their own aspects, from their own uh, viewpoint. And their viewpoint is that you have to acquire the knowledge of religion first and then uh, acquire the knowledge of uh, the inner truth, which is the marfat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only then we can uh, be considered as the true and complete Salik. Now, why should, what is the purpose of acquiring this knowledge? Why, why should we acquire all this knowledge of religion? The purpose of the knowledge is that it should incite us to action. It should, it, it should, it should uh, goad us on to work and act on our knowledge. Just acquiring knowledge, mere knowledge, is not enough. It's a, it's a theoretical knowledge, and if, it, it just, if you just sit idly by on your knowledge and you don't act on it, it's a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of knowledge, and it's not going to be beneficial to you. You have to act on it. That is why every Sufi, the true Sufi, has acted to the, to the maximum strength that they had to according to their religion you know they 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 did not shun any small sunnah 
away just because they, they were lazy or they did not want to. Although there are some uh, cases where uh, people can, you know, forego of certain ahkamat of uh, deen, but Sufis, they adopt every hukum of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because his view is on the likes and dislikes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah likes, the Sufi uh, tries to adopt those likings and try to stay away from the dislikes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he is very careful as to adopt all the uh, all likes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from the dislikes. They cannot be cherry picking uh, on the ahkamat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They adopt every hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with great love. Uh, it comes about Baba Farid Ganshakar, Rahmatullah, he was on his deathbed and he was in a half conscious and stupor state of mind. Uh, you know, he was not fully conscious, but, but when a time for first Salat come, he would wake up, he would regain full consciousness, he would offer his Salat and would go back in half consciousness again. That was his love of uh, love for the ahkamat, you know, that he did not, uh, he did not uh, skip any of the first salat even in his deathbed. And Allah would give him, uh, you know, that extra consciousness and support to make him, you know, stay awake and, you know, offer his salat. Then he would again fall back in half conscious state, uh, half unconscious state until he finally passed away. And that's how he used to teach his students that you have to stress on your actions. Not mere, action, mere knowledge is not enough. You have to act on your knowledge. He used to tell, uh, he used to tell his followers uh, about zakat. He would he used to give the example that in Shariat, uh, for example, if you have 200 dirhams, uh, you, you have a zakat of $500. You have to give in the form of zakat. But if you are achieving for haqiqat, if you are achieving for a higher goal, you are going for the level of marfat, your zakat is 200 dirhams out of 200 dirhams and you save nothing for yourself. You, you abandon yourself and you give up everything for the sake of, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how he used to teach and that's how he was intense in applying religion in his life. And that's what his followers uh, carried on later in the life. Also, he used to tell very, uh, very sternly to his followers that when a Muslim stops three things, Allah also stops three things from him. What are those three things? When a man stops giving zakat, Allah stops giving barakat to him. When a man stops performing obligatory annual sacrifice, Allah removes, Allah stops safety and security from him. And when a man stops offering daily five times salat, Allah stops and Allah will remove iman from him at the time of his death. These are the inner revelations that were revealed to, uh, to saints and he expressed it to to his followers so that we abide by the by the by the shariat and by the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without us acting on these uh, on these knowledge we are going to go nowhere in fact that's going to be a big burden Allah will ask us on the day of resurrection that we gave you so much knowledge what did you do what did you do about it did you act on it did you improve your life so these are the questions we have to, we have to answer ourselves and that, that is why we have gathered here to, to be more action oriented, not just information or knowledge oriented. The fourth point is the sincerity of intention, also known as ikhlas in in Urdu. Uh, the sincerity of intention in the purest form is that we do everything and all the things just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to please ourselves, not to please anybody else, or not for any other reason. Our act, every action should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be our only, game, only aim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered uh, his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to go and sit down with those people who are looking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayat in Quran Majid says, وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاوَةِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders his prophet go and sit down with those people who are, uh, who are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day in and day out to seek his pleasure, to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, our all actions should be directed to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should have no other intention. This is the 
crux of the uh, ikhlas e niyat or sincerity of intention. If we don't do that and if we have any other intention beside this, our actions are wasted. They are no good for us. That is why uh, Rasulullah has clearly defined innamal amalu bin niyat. We all have heard this uh, beautiful hadith many times that all, uh, all deeds depend on their intentions. If our intentions are pure only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only then we will be through in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, it will be a burden and we will be answerable. Because in another hadith, it comes, uh, the narration, in the, the meaning of which is that on the, on the day of resurrection, some deeds will be presented in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will order his angels to go and destroy those deeds. Allah will tell them, these deeds were not performed for me. They were done for something else and I will reject them, I will not accept them, go destroy them. On the other hand, some fortunate people will have their books of deed, uh, books, they will have their books of deeds presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those, for those good fortunate souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order angels to add more good deeds in their books. So uh, angels will be surprised and they will ask, Ya Rab, these, uh, these deeds were never performed by the people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them that these deeds were intentioned by him. He wanted to do these deeds with sincerity and with uh, me in mind with, with my for my pleasure, but he, could not, he did not get a chance to do them. Write it down, add them in, in his list because I know what's in, his, in their hearts. So this is the importance of sincerity of thoughts and intentions that we have to, uh, we have to adopt uh, this sincerity. If uh, sometimes we are not able to perform that act, but if we made a sincere intention to do something, Allah will accept that as if we did the whole deed, not only in our mind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to benefit, make use of this Tazkiyah uh, workshop uh, in our favor and learn something from it, gain something from it, and may Allah give us ability to improve ourselves through these beautiful majalis. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum.